back to Uncle Brent's shed. Um, today we attempt to put a new radiator in this. Um, it doesn't go to plan. So instead of uh, not using all the footage that I got, you're gonna see everything. So nothing's hidden. And what I attempt to do, I'd probably just go and pay someone because, you know, this just dragged out way too long for what, what the issue was. So anyway, hope you uh, learn from my mistake. Right, so finally got around to getting a new radiator. It is a uh, eBay spec. It's actually bigger than this original copper brass one. Um, obviously this one's been leaking for a while and um, I've had it repaired and patched over the years. It's done me pretty well, it's never got hot. It's an old three core one, standard size. It's actually standard uh, slant six one that's been modified. And um, I could drive this on a 45 degree day with the aircon going and and uh, it never got hot, so. Are interested I got the air conditioner condenser fitted in between in front of the radiator by putting a 50 mil spacer with a channel so that originally bolted to the original bolts on the radiator support panel then I put the condenser inside of that and then obviously the radiator bolts to that brings the radiator closer to the engine by 50 mil but because I'm not running a fan it doesn't really matter and that way I've got a big thermo squeezed in the front there and like I said it's never ran um, it's never ran hot it's got a 160 thermostat in it. Um, I've got that fan to come on basically as soon as the temperature ga gauge reads about an eighth. That's when the fan comes on. So, and it comes on all the time when the air con's turned on. Now I've got that radiator out. Might go get some nice soapy water and give this engine mate a bit of a tidy up. It's um, 
fairly neglected at the moment. So, a bit of that tidied up. Gotta pull the thermostat out, because I wanna flush the block out. And size up this new radiator. The passenger side should be okay. That should just bolt in. But this side here, I think I'm gonna to have to make a bracket that comes out, probably another two inches, because the radiator's wider. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with my oil filter. Remote oil filter that we have to run in Australia because the steering box is down there. Bit of an ugly setup, but works. Works good. I don't think that's gonna fit. That's not gonna work. Right now, a bit of a turn of events. That new radiator I bought doesn't fit. It's wide, but I could have worked with that, but it's too tall. <clears throat> so I have to patch my old one because I wanna drive my car. Now, this actually didn't run hot. It was just leaking at the top tank. Now, 20 years ago, I thought it would have been a good idea to put this um, metal section in there to support the top tank from shrinking and stretching because every 12 months it would split the seam along the lead join. But I'm going to take that out because that's uh, deteriorated that much over the years. And surprisingly, it didn't run hot. I don't know how, but um, we'll get all this cleaned out and hopefully I can solder that tank back on. All right, we'll clean it up. Got this cut out now. It was a good idea at the time and it did um, it did actually work. That was about two and a half mil thick. And what it was designed to do is to stop this top tank from shrinking and stretching every time it went through a heat cycle. Because um, it was just constantly splitting the, um, the lead seam. So, <clears throat> If this does work today, it's gonna eventually leak again. It's just a matter of time, so probably within 12 months, um, it'll probably be leaking again or sooner. So I just want to, um, you know, I just want to drive it, so. Now, 90% of the time when you have a blocked radiator, it's always the top tank because the water flows in the top and then out the bottom. So, And the best way to clean these out is using an old dipstick. It's a transmission dipstick. Just slot it in, just be gentle. Just do that nine million times and oh, get in there. And you'll be right. managed to get 
every single one cleaned except that one it's blocked hard with something and there's two more that i can't get this through but they are flowing so it's pretty good i'm happy with that right so we have the core all flushed out and rotted out like i said there was only a couple that uh probably three of them i reckon that i couldn't get um the little rod through two of them were actually flowing so they probably just got a bit of lead a bit of lead stuck in the top of the tube now i just need to clean up that channel all the way around there get rid of that bit of lead there and the outside get that cleaned up and the top tank so I just need to heat that and wire brush that off and same there all the way around and on the inside and then we can hopefully solder it back together So I managed to get this tank half soldered on and then I ran out of uh, lead sticks so I had to go and buy some. Um, I actually did this about three days ago so it's dragging out and um, yeah I'd probably just go and pay someone to do it eh? because it's uh, pretty time consuming and you know, it's just a just a hassle basically. So, all right, we'll put another um, lot of lead on that, and hopefully it doesn't leak. So the stuff I'm pouring on there is Baker's soldering fluid. It's like a uh, acidy flux that cleans as you um, solder.
burns your skin too, apparently. So we might have success. I've had water sitting in this upside down for probably two hours and it hasn't leaked anything out. So I'm pretty confident that it's gonna be okay. So that's good. So now we know it doesn't have any leaks, I can solder these end straps back on and then I'll give it a wash and paint it. Now I've just put a strap around that because obviously I don't have three hands. Time for a lick of paint. the difference right finally finished hopefully next video I'll be driving my car right thanks for watching I hope you learn from our mistakes um, and the next episode will be because this is dragging out too long will be um, how I prefer to flush an engine block rather than use 
water and air like the traditional way I I made a, um, a pump set up a few years back and uh, works quite well so we'll uh, we'll do that um, in the next episode thanks for watching feel free to like and subscribe comment ask me some questions don't mind answering questions it's good and always look after your mates cheers see ya Oh, that's...